Hey guys and gals, Danny Boy here, and I've got the Google Pixel 3a XL and the OnePlus 7 Pro, and this is going to be part two of my overall comparison between these phones. I want to state up front, remember, this one, the, the Pixel 3a XL is 479 retail, and the OnePlus 7 Pro, you're looking at 669 from OnePlus. That's the base model. Okay, so that's what we're dealing with price-wise. Let's see what they offer for that price. Okay, so in the last part one of this, I talked about the speed, displays, build quality, and the cameras. Okay, so now... I want to continue this comparison by talking about the software. Okay, so understand that even though this is fall 2019, I still have my 3A XL uh, on Pi. I have not updated it to Android 10 yet. And really that's because I wanted to get this comparison done first before I did that. Because the OnePlus 7 is still on. Pi, and I'm sure it'll be getting 10 here in a month or so, because on my OnePlus 6, they got it to me six weeks after the launch on the Pixel phones, so not bad at all. But software-wise, what we're dealing with is, you know, it's almost stock Android here, um, Google has added some customizations. Um, of course, you can change your theme, your background color. Okay. Uh, you can tell it when you want your battery saving mode to turn on. That's pretty nice. Um, here's your display options you do have a night light you here's your sleep options i like that they go up to 30 minutes so i wish apple would take note of that um got your colors now i wish there was more choices here but this is what we're dealing with here and again i don't know what they've done with android 10 i've not watched anything on it um, but this is your themes, light or dark, basically. And you do have an always-on display. Let's see where that is right here. Now, that's pretty sweet, okay? That's something that the OnePlus 7 Pro actually doesn't have right now. So that's pretty nice. I like that you really can't customize it much, but... It's definitely there. Here's your sound options, pretty standard here. Okay. And got here's your accessibility. Okay. Pretty standard. Alright. So yeah, I mean there's nothing really super special here going on software-wise. Probably the sweetest thing about this phone software-wise is the fact you get the updates uh, before anyone else. Because it's Google's phone, they send you the latest and greatest in the Android updates, security updates, all of that. So if you're a person that likes your phone to be up-to-date, uh, the quickest and always, then this would be the way to go. Okay. Now let's consider the OnePlus 7 Pro software. So here we're dealing with Pi. The way OnePlus does it is they have this sidebar here where you can put all your widgets. And I really, really like that. I like the centralization here. Okay. It's kind of like what Apple does. Okay, you can put widgets out here on the desktop too. But software, okay, so here again, you can change the background to dark or light. However, 
they do allow you to change your accent color. You see I have blue selected, a shade of blue, and you can change that up for all kinds of different colors. Display-wise, you got a night mode, you got a reading mode. Basically what that'll do is turn the screen black and white on certain um, when certain apps are launched for better reading. You got a whole bunch of options here on your screen calibration. I really like that. Personally, I like my phone to be as saturated on the screen as possible. Okay, of course you got your refresh rate setting. That's hot, I like that. And you can bump down the resolution or even have the phone auto switch it if you so like. So that's pretty sweet. Got a video enhancer, you do have a raised awake ambient display. There was what I was talking about with the accent color. Okay, pretty good status bar so you can actually change your battery icon there that's real nice okay um, icon manager you can hide icons up in the status bar here so things you don't want to show you can hide them that's a pretty unique feature okay and you can even change the time to go away or add the seconds Okay, so pretty good options here. Definitely more customization going on here versus the 3A XL. And honestly, for me, this is big. I like all these customizations. You have Dolby Atmos support, got an earphone mode. This does not have a headphone jack, by the way. Um, but here's your sound options, uh, buttons and gestures. This is another big part here. So you got three different ways to navigate the phone. I got the old school buttons going on right now. You can do the Android Pi Suite, or you can do OnePlus's gestures, which I like those better than the uh, Android offering. But um, you also have um, uh, two, you can do, do two different options with your navigation button. So you can do a long press or a double tap, and that allows you to do different things with the buttons. That's kind of one of the reasons I got the old school buttons going on. Okay. And then back in here, quick gestures. You can draw these symbols when the phone is off and do different things. You can do these different options here, or you can actually launch an app. So that's really hot. I actually use that a lot for the flashlight. Okay. So definitely a good amount of customization here. Okay, very good. It's not no Samsung or LG level of customization. I would say it's more in the middle, but it's definitely a lot more than the Pixel 3a XL. Okay, let's talk about unlocking these phones. Okay, so the 3a XL has a rear mounted fingerprint sensor and that's your pretty much your primary primary way to unlock the phone. And as you can see, it is really fast here, guys. Okay, one plus they have an in display fingerprint sensor. Okay, and it's pretty good, pretty accurate, pretty responsive. Okay. They also have a face unlock, and the way that works is the camera will pop up and unlock your face. It's pretty fast, okay, it's just about as fast as it was on my OnePlus 6, 
Uh, I like it. I just have it turned off because I get tired of the camera popping up, you know, going up and down. So I just use the fingerprint reader because that's perfectly fine for me. That gets the job done. But both of these phones are good in that area for sure. Now, both of these phones have a dual speaker setup and talking about audio here. Got a speaker here and here, and then this one here and here, same thing. Okay, both setups are really good. I would say the OnePlus is about 10 to 15% louder. But I would say the 3A XL feels a little bit clearer when you're listening to it. So it depends on what you're looking for, more loud or more clear. But bottom line, they're both really good. And especially the 3A XL, getting that for the $479 retail price, that's pretty sweet. Okay. And the mics on both of these phones are good. Again, though, I think I'd have to give the mic quality to the 3A XL. Just seems to be a little bit better in my usage. Um, the, the, for some reason, the OnePlus, I seem to pick up wind more. Um, not sure why that is, but I definitely would prefer the 3A XL on my quality. And then finally here, guys and gals, I want to talk about the batteries. Okay, so generally my battery usage is 12 to 13 hours off charge and about medium usage most days. So I daily drove the Pixel 3a XL here for three weeks and by the end of the day, I'd have between 50 and 60% battery. Now, I did have the always-on display on. Okay. OnePlus 7 Pro, same usage. I would have about 65 to 70% battery at the end of the day. The 3A XL has a 3700 milliamp hour battery, the OnePlus 7 Pro 4000. Okay, so you would think the 3A XL would have pretty good performance with its 1080p display, but, and it's, you know, it's more mid-range processor, but what I found is the OnePlus 7 Pro definitely has better battery life here. Now, if you turn the always-on display off, it might be more closer, but bottom line, it was the same story with my OnePlus 6. They just have really good battery life, guys. I mean, there's just no way around it. Okay, but even 50 to 60% at the end of the day is still respectable. It's still fine for my usage. So all of this being said in both is the OnePlus 7 Pro worth the extra $190 versus the Google Pixel 3a XL. And I would say definitely yes, if you have the extra uh, money that you want to spend, it's definitely worth it. You're probably getting more like $400 uh, more features for that $190 more. I mean, you're getting a lot here with the OnePlus 7 Pro. It's just a really good phone. Now, that being said, the 3A XL at $479 is still a really good phone, especially considering the camera, okay? But you really can't go wrong either way here. They're really good phones, um, but I, if I had to just pick one, I would definitely pick the OnePlus 7 Pro. So guys, um, I hope you enjoyed uh, this two-part video. As always, if you're enjoying my videos, uh, be sure to subscribe to my channel. And of course, hit that thumbs up button. For now, guys, peace out.